Hello, we're looking at two key terms as they relate to information systems. So information systems is a very, very vague term. Really, this just covers any bunch of software and hardware which helps organize information. So for instance, a website is an information system. A database is an information system. We talk about management information systems, things like Bromcom or Sims or Arbor, things which your school might use to take registers and things like that. So really anything which organizes information. And there are two types of information systems. There are two structures that you can have. An open information system is able to interact with other systems in order to share information. So if it's open, some information will leave the system and potentially, other, and potentially some information will come from another system. So to be honest, most information systems are open systems. To give a couple of, I think, quite clear examples, here is a snippet of Twitter, where you can sign up for Twitter. And they let you sign up using your email address like you would expect, but they also allow you to sign up using Google and to sign up using Apple. These are all separate companies, but Twitter have decided to use another system's login to access their system. So that is an example of it sharing information because Google would have to receive some information, they'd have to send some information to Twitter, they all operate different systems. Another similar example might be when you go to buy something on a website, often it will launch another page. So maybe it will launch a page by the card provider, like MasterCard or Visa or something like that, or maybe even your bank, to verify that it's you, to make sure that it is more secure. So again, information is being shared between the company you're buying the stuff from and your bank by uh, and maybe the car provider as well. So those are quite clear examples of it sharing between obviously separate systems. But actually, according to this definition, if you are sharing information, really anyone outside of the organization being able to access it makes it a open system. So a closed system therefore is where nobody outside of your organization is able to access the system at all and cannot get any information from it. So closed systems keep all information contained and do not communicate with other systems or other people. And so it's very hard to give specific examples of this because we wouldn't be able to see it. But if your school had a secure system for safeguarding or if a company had a secure database which could only be accessed inside the building those would be examples of closed systems which can't be accessed from anywhere else. And so they don't share information with anything else. Well, we might want to evaluate the difference between the two because most systems are open. Um, and in, mo in many cases, the benefit being, well, people outside of your organization are able to access your system. So if you want a customer to access your website, it's gonna need to be an open system. You can't have a website selling stuff to customers if nobody outside of your organization can access it. So that's, I think, a key benefit to open systems in that you often want access from people outside of your company. But having said that, the second you introduce outside access, it produces security risks because a hacker could remotely access your database, your website, and try and hack into it to gain information. If it's closed, well, hacker can't access it from the outside. You could still have internal threats, but external threats almost totally go away. And another benefit linked to this is, if it is a closed system, it's within the complete control of the organization. And so they can decide exactly what is going to be in that system. Whereas actually, if you've got an open system and there might be a benefit of an open system, you are able to make use of other services. So like I just showed, you know, Twitter is using Google, they're using Apple. Your bank or card provider might be being used by thousands of individual companies. So there's this sharing of resources, which in many cases actually is a good thing because the companies spend less time reinventing the wheel, to use a phrase, less time redoing things which already exist. And so this saves on time, it saves on cost. If Twitter refused to use Google system or Apple system, 
they'd have to fully rely on their own system, which might take longer to develop so that they can handle every single user. Likewise, an individual shop selling some clothes probably doesn't want to have to invent a bank or invent a authentication service, they'd rather use one which already exists. And if you've got a clothes system, you'd have to do all of it yourself because it can't, be sh it can't make use of anything outside of that organization.